Oh man, Chris, did you see that thing crush that That spirit? is a nice fit. That's the one we're looking for. Oh, whoa! That's what we're talking about. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Where did they fall? Oh, that's so cool. I can hardly stand it. Look at that thing. How pretty is that? That is one beautiful fish right there. Got a wet time. Boy, did he just smoke it too. There we go. Alright. Get him, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> Woo! Look at that! Woo! 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 Wow! Look at that! That is a big. Oh, I just watched that one go down. Boy, I really shot that one too. Wow, look at that one. There we go. I will take a fish like that any day. Welcome to Advantage Angler. I'm Jeff Tagge and this is Scott Biscabing. Today we're out uh, musky fishing a, a flowage type body of water. What, what do we got going, Scott? Well, we're in uh, mid-July. We're going to start out up top and work these shallow weed flats right on the break of the edge of the weeds with top waters. you got a stomper on there. I've got a jackpot on here. We'll mix it up two different types of bait. Sometimes they like the prop tile style bait. Sometimes they like more of a slower finesse tile type bait. Then we'll switch up to maybe some bucktails, twitch baits, little jerk baits, and then in the evening if we get to that far, we'll go back up on top. We'll kind of run them from the weeds, they'll break down into a little deeper water, in the evening they'll migrate back up into the weeds. So we've already had a little action this morning. You've had uh, two blow-ups on that bait and you landed one decent little chunky uh, Musky, the first one, might have been an even a little bit of uh, better fish. Yeah, that one took a pretty good wolf at it. We never saw it, so I don't know how big that fish was. but. The day will tell. Are we fishing a weed edge here or just a big uh, weed bed, Scott? What Can you give me a lay of the land a little bit? It comes out of the nice cabbage line and it just it's just like a wall here at about five and a half, six foot. It just, they disappear and just off behind us a little bit, it'll break right down to 11, 12 feet. And there's a nice inside turn and that swings back to the point over there and that's a little bit more gradual over there but it's this whole flat up here is all weeds but it's got nice ins and outs on it and it's always been really good for the muskies you can see all the tops out of the water way up in there is it a grass weed bed or is it cabbage in there it's mostly cabbage, but when you get to the shallower side, there is a little bit of that fine kind of, I don't know what they call it, like an eelgrass mixed in with it. You'll see throughout the day, you'll see some of that grass mixed right in with the cabbage. This is pretty typical flowage water. In, in what way do you mean typical? I mean, is it... You look at most flowages, they've got that kind of tea colored water to them. They got a little bit of current in them, and they have ba most of them, for the most part, have a fairly shallow fishery. The weed lines aren't that deep. You know, most of them will break weed lines out to seven, eight feet tops. Out here, it's like I said before, it's six on a good year. You might get a seven foot weed line out here, but that's pretty, pretty typical. Just because there's not the light penetration to grow deeper yeah. weed bed. Yeah. You know, this lake, I think the deepest part in this whole chain is about 23 feet. When you're fishing top waters, do you prefer it? glass calm like or do you like a little ripple on the water like this um it depends these hog wobblers and those real slow finesse baits I think work a lot better in calm flat calm water because they don't work as well like the stompers the jackpots I've had action on those you know in foot and a half two foot chops yet but those slow finesse baits don't seem to produce very well in rougher water you think just the action of the bait changes a little bit? Yeah. 
And like on those, it's kind of neat when you got a a top or a, a fairly good chop gear. They kind of come up and as they break the waves, and sometimes that'll really turn them on. There's one. Oh, yeah, there he goes. I saw the. All I saw was a flash. Yeah, in this darker water like this, you really have to watch close behind your baits. Like that one, I saw a little bit of the back, and when it swung around, I just saw that forked tail come around. I think with the sun, you caught just a, a flash of it. Because unless they're nosed right up on it, they're really tough to see. Surprised that one hanging down low. I'm surprised with the top water it didn't throw some kind of wake, but so on that figure eight question what is the best way to figure eight with a, a Z bait like that that you're using? You know how do you if you do have a follow and you see the fish right at the boat, what's the best method for getting them to bite at the boat? I do it the same way I do even with my jerk baits because what got them to come to the boat is that zigzag motion. And if I just, I'll just put this on the top, but if I do a figure eight like this, it's just a big old piece of wood. A lot of times I'll drop right to my knees and, you know, get way down like this. And I annually will probably catch 25 to 30% of my muskies on a figure eight. But if you do a slap happy, no. And not all fish are going to hit a figure eight. You know, some of them, the real hot ones, yeah, you got a good shot at them. But some of them, they're just showing themselves. A lot of times you can watch three, four, five feet behind your bait and you might see one back there. Well, then you know to go into a nice, good figure eight. 